Who do you think you are? You caused quite a stir there, didn't you? What makes you so special? What else are you planning? Are you the reason everyone's better than me in Counter-Strike? What does it mean, analog? That doesn't make any sense to me. What makes you tick? Why are you everyone's favorite gamer's favorite gaming keyboard? Just answer the questions. And why are you half a keyboard? So I wanted to create an analog keyboard because they are becoming more and more popular in video games, especially in first person shooters. The ability to change something called your actuation point, enable something called rapid trigger, and also enable something called rappy snappy, or SOCD is what it actually is. So in this video, we're gonna go over the analog keyboard that I built from scratch, or should I say half a keyboard. Real quickly to answer that, the reason it is half a keyboard is because the fact that I hand wired this whole keyboard. No way was I gonna hand wire 67 or 68 keys for a 60% keyboard. That's absurd. But these are the keys that I most commonly use in Counter-Strike. I do maybe have not the same binds as everybody, but this keyboard was kind of catered towards me. It's not a product that's gonna be sold. Of course, you can recreate it yourself, but you may wanna edit the layout. It is a little weird to be missing some of these keys here. Like I can totally notice it while playing, but I was really limited on my options, right? There are six analog to digital converters in here that can only handle four switches a piece. It means I was really limited to 24 switches. So I, I had to make priorities in which switches I want and which switches I didn't care about. I did also include a knob while you use this. It is a volume knob, but you can also click it and it acts as your escape key. That's important in a game like Counter-Strike to, you know, open up the menu or to close out the console, things like that. Good to have an escape key. It's kind of an everything key in a lot of games. And as you can see as well, this is not a full size space. So I made sure it would fit a keyboard stabilizer, which is a pretty common product. And I got just the widest shift key I could from a, the keycap set that I used here. I'll link this keycap set, but it was really just one I had laying around. And the fact that it matches so well, it's just a nice coincidence. So let's go over why Hall Effect. This is using magnetic sensors that are called Hall Effect sensors. And that is the majority of analog keyboards on the market. There are optical ones as well, but Hall Effect is a technology that's actually been around for a a long time. Basically, you have a sensor that gives a different voltage based on how close a magnet is. So by putting a magnet in a key switch, you can measure distance. Real quickly to demonstrate that, let's look at a digital switch, your typical keyboard switch, and an analog switch. I can set up a quick demo right now. First, we're gonna look at a normal key switch, how that would work. And then we'll look at the analog key switch and, and talk about what makes it different, what makes it so unique. First, this is a regular keyboard switch I have hooked up to here and then hooked up to this. This is called an oscilloscope. It is an engineering tool, but all you need to think about is that it is currently tracking the voltage over time. So it'll show me what changes are made. So with this key switch here, it's actually this blue line on the bottom, this light blue line. If I press it, you'll see it drop to the bottom. And that's it, that's the only thing it does. If I let go, it'll go back up, press it, let go, press it, let go. You'll see I make like some nice squares. Uh, this is called a discrete signal, also a digital signal. It is either in one or two discrete states, high and low, one, zero, it's binary. But what makes analog so different and unique with Hall Effect specifically, there's no physical electrical connection. This is the key switch. There's no, there's no electrical pins on the bottom. There is instead a sensor down here. So what I'm gonna do is put this key switch over the sensor. I adjusted the settings to make it a little bit easier to see. Right now it's sitting at the very top of the screen and when I press it, you'll see it drop. And this is just like the other one where it's high and low, but what happens if I press the key halfway? You'll notice I can get the voltage to sit in between those values, that high and low value. That's what makes this analog. Analog is, in the world of electrical engineering, a continuous signal, meaning it is an infinite amount of points. So for this use case here for a keyboard, I can set on the keyboard what voltage in between my high and low that I want the key press to happen. On a physical key switch like this, the key press is always gonna happen at the same point. You have no control over it other than buying a whole different key switch. But with this one, software side and firmware side, 
is where you can get really fancy with how you want to deal with it. Basically, you're getting a lot more data, and with that more data comes more customization, more options to play with. A lot of these analog keyboards have software, and you need some way to be able to adjust your settings. I'm not a software developer, and I don't know how to write software that can communicate with a microcontroller over USB. I know there's ways of doing it, I'm just, I don't know anything about software. I'm an electrical engineer. I know firmware a little bit. So what I did instead is I kind of built it all into the keyboard. It has a little screen here. And through the screen, you can access lots of features and including, you can actually play Pong on this if you wanted to. So let's go over some of those. So this screen, again, it controls everything about the keyboard. By default, nothing will happen. I tried to make it play animations, but I found it slowed down the keyboard too much. So to make it do stuff, you gotta press and hold the knob here for three seconds and it'll open up a little menu. Here is the menu. Believe me, in real life, those scan lines you're seeing, they don't actually exist. But what you can do is use your knob to scroll down and select things. So to start off, the keyboard needs a way to calibrate the keys, get that maximum analog value and that minimum analog value so it knows where it is. There's a whole calibration routine that you would run through. It tells you to press rows of a key at a time, but we don't care about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. The next setting in there is on my SOCD settings. But a real quick note about what SOCD is and what it can do for me. So if you saw my fight pad video, you might already know what SOCD is. Basically, it stands for Simultaneous Opposing Cardinal Direction. And what that is, is it's a way of filtering your inputs to disallow two combinations of buttons to be pressed at the same time, specifically opposing direction. So for the keyboard, that means A and D, your strafe keys. It will only allow one of them to be pressed at a time. Even if they're both being pressed physically, the input will only be one of them. And the same thing with W and S. More why that's so controversial in the gameplay section of this video, but for now, that's what it is. And that's the feature that you can enable and disable in the keyboard. Anyway, my SOCD settings are on off or go back. So if you turn it on and then quit, now it's on. Got to be careful with that because you can get banned in Counter-Strike. Next setting is my wallpaper. I pre-programmed about eight different images in here. So we'd use the, the knob to select which one you want. They load in one picture at a time. I kind of like this one. There's an AK-47 for Counter-Strike, nice. This one kind of fits the keyboard, at least the theme-wise. And then back to this one. Now whatever you select and save will actually be saved to the memory, so when you reboot the, the keyboard the next time, it'll be your wallpaper. The next setting is actuation, and in here you have two modes you can select from. The highlighted one is what it currently is. That is your rapid trigger and your normal mode. So to explain rapid trigger, it's probably easier to first explain how a normal key press works. And how a normal key press works is basically a distance. So it's how far do you press the key to where the key press gets sent to the computer. When you release the key, you have to release to that exact same point. But because these are analog, we don't necessarily need to worry about position specifically. So with rapid trigger, so with rapid trigger, because we know it's positioned at all points, we can actually track movement if it's moving up or if it's moving down. And we send and release keystrokes based on that. So if it's moving down, it doesn't matter where it is in the whole keystroke length. If it's moving down, it'll send a keystroke. If it's moving up, it will release the keystroke. But it leads to feeling like faster inputs. As soon as you touch the key and it starts moving down, your key press will send. As soon as you release the key, your key press will release, right? You don't have to release it all the way to that same point. You can even do it right at the bottom and you can also press it back down. Are you eating my microphone? You can press it back down without having to release the key all the way. It's, it's a cool feature and adds to a much faster feeling input. And it's one of my favorite features of the analog keyboard and what makes it so important for my project. So under rapid trigger, if I select it, then it says a sensitivity. And that sensitivity is basically how far should it move before it registers that it's moving, if that makes sense. That is for both the key press and the key release. So one is very sensitive too. I found to be a nice happy medium because with one, it's like if you barely just brush a key, it'll press and that's a little too much. So I, I keep it at two. Once you set that and you click quick, It'll save these settings. You can also go into the normal mode, and this is where you would adjust your actuation point. And they are set in millimeters, and I believe you are adjusting 0.35 at a time. It's a kind of obscure number, I know, but that was just kind of what I was working with. There's about 10 separate points, and the full keystroke is three and a half millimeters, so 0.35 made sense. But yeah, you would just set how far you have to press the key for the key to be pushed. So like 0.35, very, very sensitive. Whatever it is, you select it, and now it's selected. If I quit, it'll be saved. That being said, I personally prefer rapid trigger on a setting of two. Beyond that is a something a little fun feature I added while I had some time and that is Pong. I found some code online someone made for Pong on this screen and I edited it to work with this feature as well as edited it to be a little more difficult. I found it too easy. So I can go ahead and play and it's gonna be the right side. You'll see, oh, I already lost. It's the right side. If I move up and down, I'm controlling the paddle 
and slowly yet surely the ball will start moving faster and faster. I found it is uh, possible to win, but it is <laughs> really hard. There's also a one in five chance, or pardon me, there's a one in 10 chance that the ball will start moving a random direction after hitting the paddle. Just a fun little feature. And then to quit Pong, you just click the knob while you're in, then you hit quit, and then you're back to being an analog keyboard. So something I struggled with while building this was how exactly was I going to line up those sensors under each switch. What I actually found out and worked really well was I kind of 3D printed a PCB in a way. I 3D printed something that each sensor would mount into and the switch would fit exactly above it. So the switch was fitting exactly above each sensor identically across the whole board. I mean, more or less identically, you do still have to calibrate the keys, but it is something that has been reliable and works really well. And you know, I was thinking I would have to glue them in onto each switch, which would mean the switches would be non-replaceable, which is something I didn't want. I want the switches to be replaceable if anyone wants to build this, they should have the option of picking any switch that they want. That's Hall Effect. It's time to do a little bit of gameplay demo. We're gonna play Counter-Strike and I'm gonna go over some of the features and also SOCT and why that is so controversial. All right, so first things first, you'll notice I do actually need still my full-size keyboard because I can't type certain things. So when I do actually play with my analog keyboard, I keep this here, but I just scoot it up out of the way. I can use this and that actually gives me tons of room with my mouse, which is great. Okay, but let's talk a little bit about how Counter-Strike works so you can understand SOCD before we kind of get into this gaming section. And then we can talk about why SOCD is so controversial specifically in this game. Counter-Strike has an interesting thing where you have to be standing still to shoot accurately. If I start moving and shooting, you'll see what happens with my bullets. kind of go everywhere. It's super inaccurate to do that. What you need to do in Counter-Strike is be able to stop as quick as possible. So if I normally press like A to shift left and I let go, you'll see I coast briefly. Coast very briefly. So what I can do instead is do something called counter-strafing. And this requires some skill and it's basically where you tap the other direction and it makes you stop quicker. See, I'm stopping very immediately. And when you stop immediately, that means you can then shoot accurately immediately. I think it can be seen a lot as well with the deagle where people will strafe back and forth, but then when they want to shoot at something, they just will counter strafe. Because of the skill it takes to counter strafe, SOCD came in and made it a little bit easier. I can enable it on my keyboard here like I showed before. So now with SOCD enabled, I actually don't have to let go of the other direction. I can just tap the counter strafe direction. If I hold D and tap A, you'll see I come to that immediate stop right when I tap. So if I combine that with shooting, I can just hold one direction tap and shoot at the same time. Obviously, people don't like this because it takes some of the skill away from the game. So in response, Valve made their servers able to detect if SOCD is enabled, basically by detecting perfect counter strafes. And with that, it will kick you from games. So let's go ahead and get ourselves kicked from a game. So we're gonna just do deathmatch on Dust2. To be honest, I really don't like playing with SOC. It just feels weird. And there you go, kicked for input automation. So that is why for Counter-Strike, I make sure to keep my SOCD off. All right, so I'm just gonna play some, what are called retakes and just even get a few clips of playing that look cool. Uh, something I really like with this analog keyboard is movement to me feels really good, very smooth.
Holy shit. <laughs> so that's all I have for you today. If you are interested in building this keyboard yourself, I will post the GitHub and printables page in the description. However, you may be better off buying an analog keyboard. This thing is, it works very well, but it's a little di difficult to build. It's all hand wired. Do let me know in the comments below if you have any interest in me actually designing maybe a full PCB. Maybe we can make an open source version of this project, but that all depends on you. That might not be something I'll do if there doesn't seem to be any interest in it. So let me know. But an important topic I'd like to mention is I am at 9K subscribers, which is amazing and super cool. And I'm really thankful. I decided at 10K, I wanted to do a live stream to kind of celebrate. I want to do a project start to finish. So maybe like a four to six hour stream of a project. We're going to 3D print. We're going to wire some things. I have an idea in mind already. I'd like to make it a monthly occurrence as well. But if you do have any interest in that, do subscribe to the channel. Feel free to share this channel with your friends and we'll see what we can do in the future. But with that, that's everything. Thank you again for watching and have a good day.